This is a brake barrel. 177 caliber air rifle. And you've been shooting it wrong this entire time. I know I have for a number of years. Until I figured this out. Welcome back to the Fuzzy Fixer and welcome back to the playlist Air Rifles for You. That playlist where I cover everything air rifle and air gun related as it relates to homesteading, DIY, and the outdoors and hunting. What do I mean by we've been shooting our brake barrels wrong the entire time? Well, there's a little secret behind the design of these brake barrel action air rifles that have been screwing us over for generations. If you're anything like me, you've spent countless hours and countless hundreds of pellets trying to zero the damn thing in and as soon as you get it, you think it's there, you go take your next shot, and lo and behold, it goes wonky all over again. And you're wondering, is it here? Is it here? Where is the problem? It turns out the problem is right here. That's right, in your grip. Why is our grip so important with a brake barrel air rifle? Well, we have to delve into a little bit of the physics of how brake barrels actually operate in order to understand this. So first of all, what is a brake barrel action rifle? Or what we normally would call a Springer, right? What is a Springer? Springer is any sort of either brake barrel or other type of manually actioned rifle that essentially pulls back against resistance of a spring and store that potential energy to then be released as kinetic energy behind a pretty solid chunky piece of metal the piston. And as that comes close enough to our breech over here, it compresses all the air in this chamber right here and whoo, sends the little sucker flying. What happens is you will have two separate and immediately following one each other recoil events because you have a heavy chunk of piston moving forward against resistance and building up that pressure before it hits the breech over here well, that thing's got to stop at some point, right? It suddenly transitions its energy from moving to not moving, from kinetic to potential. And that immediate stop and jerk is the first recoil event that happens in a Springer. Now there's a second recoil event which happens immediately thereafter. That heavy piston coming to the terminus of the spring is going to come back a little bit because any sort of spring, whether gas or metal, has an equilibrium point where it likes to be. So if it overextends, it's going to want to shrink right back. What happens now when it starts moving again and then it suddenly stops? Now you have a second heavier recoil event. When that happens, here's where your hands come into play and become a very important factor.